Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this conference, Digital Transformation of the Tax Administration in the European Union. Thank you, Alvaro, for the organization, and thank you to all of you for attending this conference this afternoon. I would like to share with you some of my views on, on this topic, and the purpose of my presentation is to analyze the essential principles for the AI regulation in its use by tax administration. My presentation will try to answer two main questions. The first question is whether there is a need for an AI regulation in the public sector and furthermore in the taxation field. If the answer is yes, um, a second question to answer would be what regulation of the use of AI is necessary and on what principles should it be based? Well, regarding the first question, my opinion is that such regulation is necessary. Regulation of the use by the public sector is necessary, as already demonstrated by the European General Regulation on Data Protection. In addition, I believe that the tax field, due to this, its specialization, needs a particular regulation. Specifically, with regard to the use of AI algorithms for control purposes. In this area, the basis of its use is to make uh, effective the constitutionally recognized duty to contribute to the support of public expenditures. We know that the use of AI poses challenges, but it is also an opportunity and uh, I think it is a great opportunity for tax authorities. Pasquale Pistone has said that before, and I fully, I fully agree uh, with him. Artificial intelligence has already shown itself to be a technology of enormous potential. And the European Commission has stated that it is one of the most strategic technologies of the 21st century. AI is a combination of data and algorithms that make it possible to emulate human intelligence. But what is relevant is the data, its quality, and above all, its volume. Hence, the recent interest in AI due to the substantial increase in the availability of data. The economist uh, stated data is the oil of this century. Tax authorities uh, must take full advantage of the opportunities that this technology offers. However, in order to do so, it is essential to ensure that the technology is used properly. And this requires, first, the existence of appropriate limits and controls. And I think that limits and controls in line with our values. And second, to generate a greater confidence in this technology on the part of everyone and in particular in the part of citizens. The advantages of AI are clear. AI allows for a more efficient tax administration, one that helps and facilitates compliance by taxpayers and one that allows for a better fight against tax fraud. However, the risks uh, risks associated with the use are also relevant and they are a growing concern. In this regard, as we know, there is a, an effort to strengthen the ethical perspective of AI, incorporating ethical values and principles, although I would like to draw attention to the idea that it is not just an ethical uh, issue. It is, it is a question of real legal significance. The use of AI can violate countries' legal systems. Most countries at this moment have no regulation of the use of AI, something that will, ha uh, will have to happen in the future. And in this situation, there is a need to identify and strengthen the principles that must govern the use of AI and guide the actions of tax administrations in order to protect the rights and guarantees of citizens. Then I will try to answer the second question on what principles 
should be based AI regulation in the taxation field. And I think that we, uh, I, I would like to hi highlight four principles. Prudence, non-discrimination, proportionality, we were talking about that, and transparency. Starting by the principle of prudence or, or the existence of a prudential approach, AI, in fact, is a new reality, especially in terms of uh, data availability. This confronts us with an unknown situation and as such requires caution and prudence in the adoption of the technology. And I think this is something that countries uh, really have to, to bear in mind. This principle of prudence has implications in several areas. On the one hand, the complexity of algorithms should be taken into consideration, starting with use of low intense artificial intelligence. The scope of the projects in which, uh, in which it is used should be also be limited, with the aim of progressing as the results become certain. And on the other hand, it is essential to adopt pilot programs, which make it possible to test the results in a concrete uh, and provisional way, introducing portion before a generalized application of these tools. Furthermore, the prudential approach must also be present when assessing the validity of the conclusions coming from, from programs developed by artificial intelligence. Such conclusions should not replace the work carried out by people, in our case, tax administration officials, but should complement them. It would be unwise to delegate decision-making to AI algorithms because AI should serve as another mean for civil servants to make decisions in their work of applying the tax system, but not replace them. I believe that uh, tax authorities should be extremely cautious because the reputational damage of not doing so may out outweigh uh, the gains of any project in the short term. The second principle is the principle of non-discrimination and with, with several implications too. On the one hand, discrimination could exist in the configuration of the algorithm itself. Algorithms are fed with hypotheses elaborated by scientists, which implies the risk that human errors or uh, their basis could be transferred to the algorithm itself, which would obviously condition the validity of the new hypotheses and their results. As explained by the European Commission, if we do not take this dimension into account, artificial intelligence can lead to undesirable results, such as creating an echo chamber where people only receive information that corresponds to their opinions or reinforcing discrimination. Uh, this is the case of an algorithm that became racist in, 20 far, in 24 hours due to the exposure to racist uh, material. And on the other hand, discrimination should also be avoided, and this is very important, in the data set. The establishment of requirements is recommended. Obligation to use data sets that are sufficiently representative especially to ensure that all dimensions of gender, ethnicity, and other possible reasons for unlawful discrimination are correctly reflected in these data sets. The, the third principle is the principle of proportionality. Uh, the use of uh, proportionality is a, is a key principle uh, of our uh, tax, uh, legal system in general. The use of artificial intelligence by the tax administration also requires an approach based on the principle of proportionality. In this sense, what I believe is that it's very relevant to take into consideration the degree of interference in the rights and guarantees of taxpayers with the decision derived from programs that use artificial intelligence. Christina, sorry, excuse me, yes. because... We are not seeing your, your presentation. Yes, I can see the presentation. 
I can see it. I can see it perfectly, yes. Sí, sí que ya vemos. Pues, Estamos no. en la, en la slide We can see it. Are I only have, in fact, I only have three slides, then it's not very important, I think. So it's some the problems of some of us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, then I'll continue. Thank I was saying that I was uh, speaking about the principle of proportionality and uh, by way of like, an example, a distinction could be made between the impact, for example, of sending a letter to a taxpayer, a taxpayer warning him that the tax administration has certain information on, on, on his tax situation in which artificial intelligence has been used to encourage his still voluntary compliance with respect to the initiation of an, an audit or an inspection carried out on the basis of a decision based on artificial, uh, artificial intelligence. According to this reasoning, this principle should, be, should lead us to the highest caution when fundamental rights may be affected. A decision adopted by AI by itself should not be sufficient motivation for an action of the uh, tax administration if it may involve the violation of a fundamental right. But in fact, what I think with this principle uh, uh, is that the, the answer is uh, we have to see this case by case. We have to assess the, uh, the end or the purpose of, of, of the measure and the interfer interference that is, is made by, by this measure. The fourth principle is the principle of transparency. We know it is one of the key uh, principles when we uh, speak about AI. Uh, this is an essential principle that seeks to protect taxpayers, avoiding a violation of their right to defense. Transparency is essential to avoid possible abuses. But the problem that arises is that AI algorithms are surrounded by a certain opacity. This problem is particularly uh, intensified in the most advanced AI modalities. In the deep learning modality in which the algorithm emulates complex neuronal uh, networks extracting patterns from masses of data, it is not possible, not even for the engineers who have configured the algorithm, to determine the logic in the algorithm's decision-making uh, process. This is what is known as the black box, uh, one of the greatest challenges for the future. So far, there is no response from, from our law, and it is not easy to regulate uh, this issue. In the taxation field, in some cases, I think that early transparency may not be compatible uh, with the exercise of administrative power by tax administrations. Uh, let us think of the initiation of a tax audit procedure in which the surprise effect is essential to achieve the expected results, uh, 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 avoiding uh, evasive maneuvers. It is certainly not a transparency that exists to date with respect to the decisions to initiate a monitoring procedure with traditional tools. Since, for example, in Spain, the inspection plans of the uh, tax agency don't make public who is going to be audited nor why, only the criteria. I think that uh, we have to, to think that on the one hand, there is a duty of, of taxpayers to, to endure tax audits, but on the other hand, there is a right to be treated equally and without discrimination with respect to others. It is important that taxpayers should not be defenseless so that they can know how the decision has been taken through artificial intelligence, giving them the possibility of defending themselves if the decision has been arbitrary. I think it is a matter of enhancing the explainability of algorithms. In the words of the European Commission, it must be, it must be possible to reconstruct how and why it behaves in a certain way so that those who interact with this system must know that it is artificial intelligence 
as well as which people are responsible. This explainability is possible, it's true, in rule-based uh, AI systems, but becomes very difficult in, in the modalities known as deep learning, a problem that, 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 that is uh, very difficult in, in our days. But specific measures to promote explainability uh, are possible. Uh, for, for example, first, ex external auditing of AI systems to ensure their proper functioning, uh, checking the principles on which they are based, and controlling the absence of discrimination or bias. Or secondly, it is also possible to opt for ex post uh, certification as a condition for the validity of the decision taking. In comparative law, uh, it is worth mentioning the case of France. Uh, I think it's a reference country in this field. The, the French model included in the law for the digital republic foresees the right of the administrator to be aware of the use of algorithms for individual decision making in order to avoid the possibility of ignorance by citizens of administrative decision based on artificial intelligence. Likewise, in France, citizens have the right to have information on the functioning of the algorithm, how and to what degree it has contributed to the decision making, the data processed, and the processing parameters. And um, I would like to finish uh, with uh, speaking about the, the importance of, of these principles, but also uh, it is very important to reinforce information governance. The tax administration are holders of taxpayer data, data and must ensure the correct collection and use of such data, surrounding themselves with measures to promote good information governance. On the one hand, they must ensure uh, data security, as well as respect privacy and confidentiality. In addition, administration should also take responsibility for the quality of the data, since not all uh, the information they receive has the same value and, and the same value, yes. A good integration of all the information should be encouraged, improving the data set, the, uh, the databases of uh, tax administrations. And my final remarks, some conclusions. Uh, AI is a strategic, a strategic technology. Tax administrations must have the most of uh, this opportunity and they are in a privileged situation since, as we know, the success of this technology is based on data, in particular, its quality and volume, and tax administrations are increasingly in possession of taxpayers' information. However, the risks posed by AI require careful use and a reflection on the principles that should inspire its regulation and uh, the application to. This is a question of balance, uh, which we must strike. On the one hand, we cannot miss the opportunity that technology offers, of course. For this, beyond investment in technology or in human resources with profiles adapted to it, it requires First, the use of AI in favor of the taxpayers themselves. And second, the existence of well-defined limits that protect the rights of taxpayers. I think that tax administrations that are able to develop AI to its full potential, respecting the principles, will have a competitive advantage over others. At the same time, they will be able to provide better services to their citizens while fighting uh, fraud better. Thank you very much.